Hi guys, welcome to this video. So about a week ago, the recent version of Python, which is Python 3.10, was launched. That was on October 4th and it came with a ton of features. So in this video, I'm going to be going through some of the features that came with the recent launch that you might want to know. So let's get started. So before we start with going into or diving into the features, I also want to say that you can check out the written version of this particular video or in more details on my blog at codewithtomi.com. I'll leave the link in the description below. So if you want to read this as an article, you can just go there and check it out. So there were a lot of cool features that came with the recent launch of Python and one of them was better error messages. So the in the recent version of Python, which is Python 3.10, the when like a user has an error, the messages that are being thrown are more detailed. Like for example, we have this particular list right here that says names. So it is equals it has three elements, and as you can see, it doesn't have an ending. Let me say curly braces here, which is supposed to have. So if we run this with the older version of Python, which is Python 3.9 or earlier, it's gonna give us this particular error. So it's gonna to point to print names and say invalid syntax but we know that that's not where the error is from because if we go back we know that it's from right here so now if we run this with the recent version which is 3.10 this is the error it gives us so it points to names which is the particular list and then it tells us that the curly braces was never closed so this is very good and it doesn't just stop here so it has a lot of more you know better error or improved error messages that it throws to a programmer so we can also see right here i have um this particular variable named names so there is this new feature also which allows python to suggest to us the name that let's say we want to print now what i mean here is we have this variable named names and right here i want to print that variable named names but I wrote name without an s so that's a typographical error now if i run this with python right now what it's going to say is name name is not defined did you mean names so automatically it suggests this particular variable that we already have right here because it's you know it correlates or it's similar to what we want to print and that's also a very good feature that came with the python 3.10 launch now the next one is structural pattern matching. Now this is my best feature that I've seen that came with this particular launch. So if you don't know what it is, structural pattern matching allows you to like match variables with pattern of values. So it brings like the match case statement into Python if you have used that in like switch case statement in any other programming language. So it's kind of similar to that. So it's what it does is that it does a particular task if it find a match while taking an object and testing it with other various match patterns so if you want to you know know more about this i'm also going to leave a link to the python documentation so you can learn more about this structural pattern matching but this is basically a new feature that came with it and this is how a generic syntax of pattern matching looks like so we have the match the subject we have the case that is matching it with and the action if that case is true so now this is a typical example so for example we have this http error function and it takes status so now we are matching status for find a case of 400 it returns bad request and we find the case of 404 418 and so on so now you can see that right here also we have this particular identifier or key now we can use that also to combine several literal literals in a single pattern so for example it's just like saying um if we find 404 or 403 then return non found so you can like match it with an if else statement or something like that and we also have this particular identifier over here which is also an underscore so if like it didn't return anything if it returned none it's just going to say something is wrong so if you have not you know used this before you might not get it immediately or it might be new to you 
as i said you can check the python documentation it's pretty detailed on what this is about so the next thing that i want to talk about is length checking in zip so normally when we have two lists and we want to join each of the values together we use the zip function so if you don't know the zip function before that's what it is used for so for example in this image here you see that we have two lists the first one is countries and the second one is continent now what the zip function does is that it joins these two lists so it joins united kingdom with europe joins nigeria with africa and it joins india with asia so what i can do now i can have another variable or an another list and i can say zip countries and continent together now if i print this particular new list so i can say print list final list you see that it just gives me united kingdom europe nigeria africa india and asia so it joins them together but as you can see canada is left out and this is because we have four elements in here and we have three elements in here so anyone that doesn't have any other elements to match is just going to be left out so a new feature is then with this particular launch, which allows you to first of all check the length of the two lists and make sure they have equal number of elements before matching. So now we want to do that right here. Everything is the same. But here where we have the final list, say zip countries and continent. Then if we add this and say strict equals true, is first of all going to check if the number of elements in the two variables are equal. If they are not equal, which is in this case, they are not equal. When I run them, it gives me this error and say argument two is shorter than argument one. So that is another cool feature that came with this launch. So guys, those are just three features that came with the Python 3.10 launch. There are a lot more features that came with this launch and I have most of them or some of them in my article right here on my blog. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And also, if you want to check every single thing, I'm also going to leave another link where you can check the Python documentation for the launch. Now, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.